Nobody was coming from the opposite lane. That's good. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, little wide. All right, Ninja 400 guy. Stop trying to overtake the bikers in a way, eventually almost crashing to them. Okay, there's nothing wrong with doing that thing, but that right there is a little dumb stuff. So that, that car, very good, very good. Move over, let the idiot get in front. All right, it probably was a mistake. Hey, music off. I told Cardo to put his music off. Are you blind? No, no. What, what happened? Okay, put it back. I should have stopped. You didn't see two bikes. No. Didn't see two bikes. Didn't see two bikes even with movement. So sometimes stuff can can happen like that. But yeah, he was so close to you and I kind of want to see what happened really. All right, here we go. The driver. So moving around, moving around like this. Now the driver could possibly think that this motorcycle rider is gonna turn left. You know, so it's like I just I'm gonna switch my lanes and get in here. But then, uh oh, the the rider got back into it. I'm giving them way too much benefit of the doubt because they he did just try to split between everybody. <laughs> Either way, not good. Now, one thing we can point out here is look at the 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 light on the on the ground. So take a look at the light on the ground. It, it's a little bit of light here, a little bit of light here, nothing crazy. Now, the reason why I grabbed this person's attention, and I know this is common sense here, but take a look. So right now, the light is the light is the light is the light, and then we get to this massive amount of light, massive amount of light. You can even see the ref uh, the shadow of us. You can see the light in the mirror, but look at all this extra light. That's gonna let you know somebody's coming up behind you and you gotta take some type of evasive action. If you had to, you could swerve left. Don't hit this vehicle, so you're gonna have to swerve right again and get back in your lane. Um, but when it comes to this stuff right here, guys slam the brakes and we're looking back. Now it's time to look forward to get ourselves out of there. Not much we could have done. Now when we get up to here, now listen to the two different people talking. So the the friend, hey Warren Traveler, thank you for the nine ninety nine donation. Don't mind me, just your neighbor, friendly neighborhood, Warren. Uh, good to have you here, man. So when we get up to here, think about uh, what these people are saying. So the buddy is upset, saying, "What the hell are you doing?" And then the motorcycle rider that's talking right now, asking what happened. So I would move more towards the, "Hey, what happened?" Because when you say what's wrong with you or something like that, you just put the other person on on edge. Hey, Cardo, music off. That's one thing I like about Cardo. What was that? So what was that? Are you blind? No, no. Are you blind versus, hey, what was that? So it's all about how you first interact with somebody that's going to put them on defensive mode. And it's up to you if you want to even have this conversation with them. All right, we're going to move on to this one. Not much yeah, we can do on that one. All right, so lane filtering. This is definitely not United States, but lane filtering uh, with this amount of traffic, no bueno. We're going to talk real quick. Hey, don't do that, buddy. We're going to talk real quick about pattern that we see and what you need to watch out for whether you're lane filtering or traveling on the road itself okay so lane filtering major hazards not really able to swerve left or right you can only brake or accelerate not a lot of line of sight bad for planning your ride bad for positioning everything but uh, in different cul cultures and different areas it happens so we're going to get forward a little bit now take a look at this pattern so this is the moment the vehicle decided to turn left now we're going to talk about why okay big open spot Big, long line. If you're in a big, long line and there's a big open spot right here, wouldn't you want to switch over? So whenever you see this, whenever you see this big open line, big open spot right here. So get this out of your mind right now. Just don't even look at this part. Big open spot right here. When you see that, that is the pattern that is going to put you in an in a orange stage maneuver. Okay, So you're going to be orange staged right over there specifically identified an, a threat or an interest or a focus, something. You recognize the pattern. That right there is the pattern. So once you recognize that, you're already doing the reaction. You're already getting your hands on the uh, brakes, about to squeeze. You're ready to do it if you need to. So you're already in orange stage when you see a pattern like this. When you're just regularly riding, but when you are lane filtering, you should already be doing that because it's already a dangerous spot, right? Lane filtering is automatic orange stage because it's a hazardous type situation. So once you see this pattern and the fact that you're already in orange stage, you should be prepped and ready for this. Um, also, one thing that does play into this, if you go too fast, remember what I said, you can't swerve left, can't swerve right, you can only accelerate and decelerate because of poor line of sight, poor positioning, everything. 
So if you can only brake and accelerate, what speed should you be going right now? You should be going the speed that you can stop in time for something like this. Because you can always accelerate. It's very hard to decelerate nice and smooth, especially if you're riding on the lines. It's paint. So right here, he sees this, was able to brake in time, so he was doing the appropriate speed. He did see what was happening. He did see the vehicle come out. He did do a red stage maneuver, did very good. But we also got agitated. We got pissed off because we got surprised. My goal with this video right here is to make it to where you're not surprised because we saw this big open area, and we recognize that a vehicle will want to get into that big open area. So now we're going to anticipate somebody's going to go into that big open area. So now we're not going to be surprised when somebody does. We're just going to squeeze the brakes and go on with our day. But we get surprised, and we're going to be pissed, and we're going to do this right here. Don't do that. Don't be surprised because at the end of the day, you don't want to do it either. You're upset. I don't want you guys being upset. I don't want you guys being upset. Nighttime riding, hazardous situation. This motorcycle rider was a little bit of a dumb dumb. The other one, not the one that's with the camera. Um, it almost looked like we froze a little bit. We slowed down probably because we rolled out the throttle, but I don't think we applied the brakes. Almost crashed, yeah. Good to know why we almost crash, why we have close calls so we can prevent close calls. Because if we prevent a close call, there's a good chance we can prevent a crash. Okay. So it looks like the rider up front went from the far right lane to the far left lane right before an intersection to turn left. Okay, not paying attention. So there's the brakes on the motorcycle rider. Now remember, we talk about intersections, automatic orange stage, you'd be prepped and ready for a lot of things. Now why are we applying the brakes on a green light? Uncommon thing in a common situation. Just go ahead and sit back. We're going 73 miles per hour also. I don't think this is a 73 mile per hour area. So we also have speeding involved. So we are probably doing just as bad as the rider up front. We're hauling ass, and we almost hit that rider. So if we were just going the normal speed or the speed limit, this would probably not have been an issue. So what we could do here to change our, uh, our outcome to where this is not even a video anymore is to just do a speed limit, watch out for dum-dums that do some dum-dum things, intersections, automatic orange stage, nighttime, low visibility, so just do the speed limit. Get yourself out of there. I think he might have clipped him or he applied so much brakes that he lost traction for a split second. So don't speed. Don't speed. Because he's going 49 right now. That's probably a 45 area. He was going 70 something. Because look, look at the flow of traffic. Let's take a quick look. Look at this truck. Or not this truck, this SUV right here. And then we're going 46. We're going to maintain speed with this vehicle. So more than likely, it's a 45 mile an hour road. See how we're going with the flow of traffic? We weren't doing that earlier. We're going 70 something, all right? All right, so we're riding around with Maximus. Come on, new riders. If you want to know how to ride effectively and smart, make sure you grab the Smart Rider Basic Training eBook. I talk about how to plan your ride, what the Smart Rider principles are all about, the color code chart, what patterns to look for, how to rescue another rider. Anyways, you got to just check it out. Make sure you click the link in the description. There's a discount code. It's the cheapest it's ever going to be. Only 500 people are going to be able to get the code. So make sure you grab yours now. All right, let's get back into the video. We're riding around with Maximus. The biker in the front was very lucky that no one was coming from the opposite lane. Okay. There we go. Nobody was coming from the opposite lane. That's good. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, little wide. All right, so it seems to be fine. He hopped up. Very good. Get yourself out of the road. There you go. Get yourself out of the roadway. We got the truck coming. How are we going to get our buddy home? Got a ram mount, that's the problem. Uh, get yourself a rock form. All right, so let's take a look. We're going 60 miles per hour, 70, in the front was very 80. No one was coming from the opposite lane. 80 miles per hour, we're gonna slow down to probably 70. Let's see. Look at the very top of the screen. It's a little dark, I know. Can't see it. So more than likely, he lost traction and went into went into the to the wall. 
Now, this is part of the stuff that we talk about on the track is that you just go sliding on the grass or gravel. But if he was going the other way, he would have been right into the guardrail. Thankfully, he didn't hit the wall itself. He's just going to slide across the gravel, or not the gravel, but the asphalt. Um, but that could easily have been a fatal incident. Thankfully, he stopped right there, and it looks like he's got full gear. So let's see. Looks like he's got full gear. He at least has a helmet on. Just It's just not good. Um, no, he's just pushing it to his limit. You guys are thinking, it's 80 miles per hour on a road that looks like this, leaning super far. So his tires are probably good. It's just that we maxed out those tires. We maxed them out. More than likely, guys, you have to think about it. When you put, when you buy a bike, you're buying, what's up, Comfy Toast? You're buying a bike with, with good tires, good tires, but they're street tires. They're not racing tires. They're not tires that are designed to get crazy, crazy, crazy grip. They're designed to give you at least some mileage on them so it, you're not spending too much money. Now, you could always upgrade and get race tires, but they're going to last like 1,500 miles. <laughs> it's not a lot. Uh, they want to give you at least some tires that will last like two to three to four to 5,000 miles. Um, so these ones, they're not designed for that. So you're pushing it to this limit when you're taking these turns going 80, 80 miles per hour. GX3, here we go. We're going to have some fun steering damper. So he's going to put a little bit of money in his bike. And sharp turn. Don't low side, please. Okay, go ahead. Oh, this is that rider from, from earlier. Interesting. That's his perspective. We got his perspective. We had the perspective of the guy in the back. Oh, man, he was pushing it hard. He was pushing it hard. Hey, he's able to walk and move. That's good. He's got full gear. He's got full leathers. Probably has no abrasions. Probably, ha probably a little sore. Probably a little sore, but he's got no abrasions. All right, so we're going to be going around this corner. High speed, super low angle. You know, we got good body position and everything, but we're just pushing it hard, 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 hard. And then we low side, so we lost traction. Okay, that could have been gravel on the ground. It could have been uh, the tires. It could have been just pushing it to the limit to where we don't have enough traction, whatever it is. We're pushing it to the very edge so that a minor little factor can cause you to drop the bike. So he's gonna keep sliding across the ground, tumbling around, and now doing this. He's looking at the ground. He's like, oh, what just happened? All right, I gotta get up out of the road. This sucks, and he's gonna be able to move. Now we got a truck that's gonna be coming around the corner. Now imagine doing it maybe five seconds later. Get hit by that truck. That's why we gotta be paying attention. You, uh, you can see the fluctuating of throttle too. Let's take a look. So remember, if you give it throttle, do, and you do this with the throttle, or do a little bit of braking, you start doing some crazy turning, it takes traction to do that. So when you're doing this, it's like remove traction, remove traction, remove traction. It's what it's doing there. So he's going to trail. No, he didn't trail brake. You hear it too. Yeah, it's like. Yep. Major, the main injury is probably a major hemorrhage of the wallet. Exactly, Grimbeard. Look at that thing. Oof. No buenos. All right, here we go. Cool breeze. Once again, side of the vehicle right here. It's gonna take our lane, non-issue. We're gonna probably either get in the next lane or let that person do his dumb dumb stuff. Oh, there you go. Don't get too close to the dumb dumb. Take the left if you want. Take a quick look at them. Probably eating their boogers. All right, here we go. Roundabouts, automatic orange stage. Watch out for sides of the vehicles. They're going to go in, non-issue. Ew, gross. You're going to get some of that uh, exhaust in your throat. Moving on. If you like today's video, make sure you click this video right here to keep watching more. But if you want to become a smart rider, click this and grab this Smart Rider Basic Training eBook. It's gonna help you become a smart rider by planning your ride, rescuing other riders, knowing what patterns to look for, and so much more. Make sure you grab it. Link will be in the description also. I'll be seeing you around.